House is set to vote on the Protecting the Right to Organize Act tonight. The bill amends the National Labor Relations Act to extend protection to union workers and revises definition of employee and supervisor to prevent employers from classifying employees as exempt from labor law protections. Let's bring in our closing bell closer of the day, Richard Trumka, president of the AFL-CIO. Uh, very good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on, Will. Would you like to see this uh, California-based uh, law go nationwide? Well, of course. Uh, but we, let, we want to see something else. Look, our economy is plagued by inequality at three different levels. There's the inequality of income, there's the inequality of opportunity, and there's inequality of power, the power between corporations, the rich, and, and workers. Until you address inequality of power, you can't address inequality of opportunity or income. The bill, the PRO Act, would help to rebalance that power and give workers a stronger voice and let them accumulate more of the wealth that they produce and thus shrink inequality in the income, in the economy. Are you concerned at all, Richard, about one of the main criticisms of the act, uh, that is that reducing this kind of flexibility that some employers have could lead ultimately to layoffs, certain jobs just evaporating as opposed to those jobs being transformed from part-time to full-time? Not in the least, Will, and here's why. Employers have to pay workmen's comp and they have to pay unemployment comp. These groups, by cheating, by misclassifying their workers, don't pay into either one of those funds. Thus, they get an unfair advantage and put that on the backs of other employers. This would equalize that opportunity and make them play on a level playing field with everybody else. If they can't compete there, that's called the market. But, I mean, the companies say, especially Lyft, that I think 90 percent of its people want to have this as a not full-time job. They want to make some extra income. They want to drive some extra shifts. They want to do it on their own time and their own number of hours and not be dictated by the company. This look, that wouldn't change. They could still have that kind of a model. It would just mean that they would be called employees and they would have to pay the benefits of every other employee. The same thing that every other employer would have in the country. They could still have a flexible work schedule. They could still negotiate for better benefits. In fact, they could have a whole way, a better life if they had a greater say in, in the model that they're dealing with. Richard, switching focus to, to the broader economy, you, you've spoken already in this interview and, and more recently about your fears about the level of inequality in the U.S. economy. But before we get to that issue specifically, uh, do you applaud the gains of the Trump economy over the last few years? There have been some positive things over the last couple of years. Uh, they've been a continuation of the economy that this president inherited. Uh, they, he hasn't kept pace job-wise, and they have, we haven't seen the inequality gap grow. In fact, we've seen the inequality gap, gap, gap grow during his, his tenure. Uh, in, a, in addition to that, uh, we've seen deaths of despair uh, increase all three years under this president. A death of despair is somebody who dies from uh, addiction, uh, overdosing, or alcoholism. They, they don't have any life left. They think there's nothing left for them. If the economy is so wonderful, why are deaths of despair continuing to grow each year? It's because inequality continues to grow each year, and more and more people feel like they're being left behind. The PRO Act that we're voting on today would actually help to close that gap and bring people back together and give workers more say on the job. 